G'day everyone, my name's Cautious Pancake, and today I want to get your thoughts on a new explosive quest that I built for the Trader Quest mod. And I mean that literally. At its core, this is a fetch quest, or perhaps more accurately, a speed fetch quest. But instead of it being based on a timer like I used for the speed clear, this one is instead about if you can get in and out before being blown up. The story behind this quest is that the remnants of the military have decided to target a nearby POI for destruction, since they believe it to be a haven for zombies. Unfortunately for our trader friends, there's a valuable delivery satchel stored within it. Your job will be to retrieve it before the building is rubble. So let's start off with a tier 1 run, and afterwards we can talk through some of the more technical aspects, design decisions, and potential issues related to the quest. First thing to do is generally to make your way in undercover somewhere, as the artillery barrage will kick in fairly quickly. Oh, that was a little close for comfort. So let's head on inside and get on with things. We're gonna to need to find the satchel, it's downstairs. So let's just take out this guy before we jump down into the basement so he doesn't come in behind us. Open up the drop, grab our arrow and head on down. You can hear that the barrage is continuing while we're down here. We're gonna to need to take out this guy first, Al. Get him knocked over. And finished off. Check if anyone's in the cupboard. Not today. And the satchel is there. Okay. So we'll take out this guy. And there'll probably be... Yep, there's another one over there. Knock him down. Finish him off. As you can tell, it is a race against time. Those explosions aren't going to take long to rip through the roof of what is effectively a wooden structure. Okay. We've got the satchel, but as you will see, that doesn't stop the barrage. Here it is. Whoa, oh, that's fairly close. We've knocked out the roof already, so we don't want to stand underneath that hole. Oh, and there goes that section, but it also opens up a nice little exit for us to make our way outside. As you can see, it's pounding on that section a little bit. And there's somebody else nearby. You can see that the... Artillery barrage doesn't stop just because we've got the satchel, so you do need to make haste outside. Once you've finished watching the explosions though, you, you can head back to your trader, hand it in for a standard fetch quest reward, but with one exception, the juke you get will be double. So that's the basics of the quest, but as always with these things, there's a few additional design decisions to consider, quest quirks and choices to make on how the final version is put together. So let's talk about those while I run a tier 3 version in the background. First, let's talk about the explosions. They're triggered on two timers, a fixed timer that decreases per tier, and a variable timer that is the same per tier. The fixed timer starts at 7 seconds for tier 1, and decreases by a second for each tier, down to 3 seconds for tier 5. The variable timer on the other hand is a fixed range, and delays the explosion by 1 to 5 seconds for all tiers. This timer is added on to the previous one, so tier 1 will have explosions roughly 8 to 12 seconds apart, while tier 5 has explosions from 4 to 8 seconds. Additionally, the explosions do variable damage to players and zombies, starting with a lower damage at tier 1, and increasing all the way through to tier 5. This was necessary so that it doesn't just one-shot you when you're running around with primitive armor at the start of the game, but also I didn't want you to be able to eat 500 explosions in a row when kitted out with tier 6 heavy armor. The block damage though is constant at the moment, so tier 1 buildings get wrecked pretty quickly, but that's offset by how quickly you can run through a tier 1 quest POI. Tier 5 buildings are often large and have a lot of concrete, so they hold up a bit better, but of course you're in them for a lot longer, and the explosions are more frequent as well, so I think it's balanced in the end. Another thing to note is that the satchel can't be destroyed. Seven Days has been built so that if it does happen to get destroyed as part of a fetch quest, it will automatically respawn in the exact same place. However, that doesn't mean that you can always get to it, so make sure you move quickly, especially if the satchel spawns up in the roof. Even though the satchel can't be destroyed, the POI loot can be, and the POI itself will obviously take a battery. This leads to one of the choices that I like about this quest, which is what armor you should wear. Heavy armor will provide a better chance of survival if you get hit by an explosion, while lighter armors will provide less protection, however they'll allow you to move faster through the POI, and you'll have a better chance of potentially getting to the satchel quicker. 
Additionally, while the barrage will continue indefinitely while you search for the satchel, once you have it, it will continue for a while, but it will then cease, allowing you to head back in and retrieve the rewards if you so choose. This should reinforce the motivation to get the satchel as quickly as possible. Additionally, this design means that players that know their POIs well are rewarded. If you know that the quest offered is for a POI that has the rewards up on the roof, then you can make a choice about if you want to try and make a dash for the roof immediately, risking death to get the rewards first, or skip the quest entirely, since you know that they'll probably get blown up. Or you can just make sure to get the satchel first, and then get out, which is what a lot of players do anyway currently for speedrunning quests. One thing to raise, because I've seen it in other games, and that's whether or not there should be a warning where the explosion is going to occur. The current quest design doesn't have anything, and I prefer it that way simply because whilst other games have a warning to tell you to get out of the bad, it doesn't really match the way Seven Days is currently set up. For example, there's no warning when you step on a landmine, it just blows up. So I'm happy with this, I also don't know that I could ever put a warning ring into the game, at least with an XML only mod, so it's kind of the way it is, but let me know if you disagree with the approach. The next quest design question is actually a question for you. Currently, the quest is set up as the standard fetch quest tiers, but I do wonder whether it should be set up similar to an infestation quest. Not in terms of zombie count, but instead where the POI is a tier below the current quest level. If I made this change, it would mean that there's no tier 1 version, and that the tier 2 quests would have tier 1 POIs. The reason I think this is potentially a change that I should make is because of the increased danger of the quest, and that speedrunning means that you need that little bit of extra power versus the zombies, given that you also have to worry about the artillery explosions. Similarly, there's a the question of reward. Currently the item and XP rewards are the same as a fetch, but the dukes are double, which I think works well at the lower tiers, but potentially at the higher tiers, I'm not sure that the risk is at high and maybe that the rewards are a little overpowered. I've put a poll for this and a few other questions up as well. Links to the polls are in the description, so please head over there and vote after the video for what you think should be put into the final version, as that has really helped me out in the past to put out a better version of the quest than what I'd originally built. Another thought for this is that while it is currently allowed for multiplayer, be aware that for every player on your quest, there'll be twice as many explosions. So I hate to think of the carnage that will occur with a full party. I expect that with a completely full party, it will be probably unplayable in the current form, but quite possibly hilarious at the same time. Oh, and I don't recommend playing this with other mods where explosions set things on fire. That's not going to end well. So that's my new quest. I've called it the Dash for Cash or More to Run, but there's another poll to help with the naming, so please go check that out after leaving a like on this video first, obviously. Well, at least if you think this is an interesting quest to add. I'd love it if you did please consider subscribing as well if you'd like to see more of my 7 Days to Die content in the future. Thanks to the generous support of my Patreons shown here, thanks to you for watching this video, and happy dodging explosions I guess.